The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. Sorry. Um, joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Mauricio Bartolomeo, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Ledin. Welcome, Mauricio. Um, so let's start with the elephant in the room, which is that, you know, we just saw one of the biggest hacks in crypto history. And the market doesn't really seem to be responding unless we're missing something. What's your take? Listen, I mean, uh, I, I think it, the market reaction has certainly been interesting. I think a few comments there are we have now seen three bridge uh, hacks in DeFi over the last hundred days. We saw the Badger Dow hack in December. We saw Wormhole 300 million not too long ago. And then we just saw the, this one thrown in uh, last week. Um, if you look at that, there's a couple of trends that, that are interesting. One, the, the hacks are getting bigger. So Dow, uh, Badger Dow was 120 million, Wormhole was 300. Now we're up to 600. Um, and they're not, they don't seem to be slowing down. They seem to be getting bigger and more sophisticated. And I think this points to some of the vulnerability around that particular piece of DeFi infrastructure, which is bridges, um, which intend to essentially uh, connect different uh, blockchains that otherwise would be in, uh, not compatible. And so it's, it's a bit of, you know, for lack of a better word, patchwork, and, and it creates some uh, fragility uh, in, the, in the entire ecosystem. So I think you're seeing uh, hackers actually go target bridges directly, which I think is an interesting trend. So I, it's kind of sounds like what you're sort of saying is that the lack of market reaction is just because people are like getting used to this. This is just like a thing in crypto now. Like. It, well, there's been there's been some benevolent, uh, you know, in the past, if you look at, for example, you know, even the Bitfinex hacks, it took a long time to, to come to fruition, but the funds were then eventually found. Um, if you look at the wormhole hack, you had jump trading kind of uh, jump, for lack of a better word, right after the hack and, and became sort of a benevolent uh, uh, um resupplier of the capital that was lost, I think people are sort of expecting something similar to happen, uh, you know, time and again, but it, it's kind of like musical chairs, right? Like it'll, it'll happen until it doesn't. And at that point, you'll have people running for, for you know, uh, you know. I, I just don't think that there will be a benevolent person willing and ready to step up every single time. All right, Ben, Mauricio, the markets aren't down, they're going up. So what are some of the factors the macro factors behind the rise in the crypto markets? Definitely, because I think there's a lot of that to point to. So for one, we have, um, you know, just specifically looking at Bitcoin, you have uh, the Terra or, or Luna Foundation Guard purchasing billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. They purchased over a billion, 1.3 billion over the last, I want to say, week or so. And they have apparently the green light to continue purchasing up to 3 billion. Um, then on top of that, you have Michael Saylor taking out a loan to buy more Bitcoin, which Funny enough, we have a product that lets clients do that in three clicks. And so every time he does that, it's, it thinks actually we see a, a spur of activity because this is the first time he's taken out a loan uh, to buy more Bitcoin. And then the other positive thing that you have tailing into this is the Ethereum merge. You have a lot of hype building up around the merge and this, the Google search trends, you know, they're reaching records. And this is getting excited. This is getting excitement around the retail community. All right. So taking a look at Bitcoin. When do you think it'll take to reach 50,000, that next leg higher? You know, I think an interesting uh, upcoming piece is what's going to happen with the SEC's decision on Grayscale. I think you saw uh, Grayscale take a, a bit of an aggressive stance last week saying, hey, we're ready to take legal action depending on what this decision uh, looks like. And I think, you know, people are looking at that and, and they're looking at how big these companies have gotten. Uh, and they say, OK, well, these companies now mean business. And I, I think this is really going to put a bit of a spotlight into that decision. Uh, and, I, and I think that could potentially be the next catalyst, depending on the outcome of that. I'll just caveat that, that first of all, Grayscale is a sister company of Coindesk. But uh, in that interview that you're talking about, Michael Sonnenschein, the CEO of Grayscale, said that just option, all options are on the table. So we'll still see that that decision on whether or not that spot Bitcoin ETF happens is July, so still some time on that front. Anything you're seeing in the alts that you're interested in? Um, I think the the Ethereum merge is is what I think most people are interested in. It's it's a big stakes sort of event that's going to happen in crypto. It it is a very uh, material change in the consensus algorithm or protocol for for the second biggest blockchain uh, in the market. And so I think the, there will be a lot of anticipation leading up to that event. 
And even if it becomes successful, there's going to be a lot of reshuffling in the crypto economy because you're going to have a lot of miners from ETH looking for a new home and you're going to have a lot of new investors essentially potentially looking at this proof of stake system. So there's going to be a lot of action uh, regardless uh, as we move closer to this event. So I think that's probably where where I would be keeping my eye out and then call it a couple of months to come because I think that's where most activity is going to is going to be present.